Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. David Friedman, who was appointed last night as Trump's new ambassador to Israel, announced he is looking forward to work in Jerusalem, the eternal capital of Israel, to strengthen the unbreakable bond between the two countries. Senior Israeli officials relay messages to President-elect Trump and ask him to speak out against outgoing President Barack Obama if he does not veto a Palestinian draft resolution at the United Nations Security Council, which calls on the international community to boycott Israel. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accuses the government of Syrian President Bashar Assad of carrying out nothing short of a massacre in the northern Syrian city of Aleppo. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump announced last night that he will appoint David Friedman, his advisor in Israel during the presidential campaign, as the new ambassador to Israel. Trump said in a statement that Friedman had been his longtime friend and was a loyal advisor, adding that Friedman would be a tremendous asset to the United States in strengthening ties with its allies and in the effort to reach peace in the Middle East. Friedman responded to the appointment by stressing that he would work tirelessly to strengthen the unbreakable bond between the two countries and to promote peace in the region. He added that he expected to do so from the American embassy in Jerusalem, the eternal capital of Israel. In related news, senior Israeli officials relayed messages to President-elect Trump and asked him to speak out against outgoing President Barack Obama if he does not veto a Palestinian draft resolution that was submitted to the United Nations Security Council. The resolution states, among other things, that Israeli settlements on lands the Palestinians demand for their future state are illegal and implicitly calls on the international community to boycott Israel. The draft resolution is scheduled to be put to a vote before Obama leaves office the last circumstance in which the outgoing American president will have a chance to influence the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now to another matter, Jewish settlers of the West Bank outpost of Amona are preparing for a possible forced eviction after they rejected a deal by the government which aimed to ensure a peaceful removal of the settlers to a nearby post. The outpost of Amona, which according to a Supreme Court order has to be dismantled by the 25th of December because it is located on privately owned Palestinian lands, is home to some 330 Jewish settlers. The government's failure to find a solution to the outpost raised the prospects of violence between the Jewish settlers and Israeli security forces tasked with the removal of Amona as the residents of the illegal outpost pledge to remain in the outpost and resist its imminent eviction. All the houses you see in Amona, it's only house, it's the Israelis' houses, and we are going to stay. And the government said we need to go and we need to leave. And all the families and all the people you can see now in this morning, it's the last few hours before coming all the government to take all the people out from the houses. We are going to stay forever in Amona. The settlers, backed by dozens of teenagers from across the West Bank and Israel, were preparing the ground for a violent confrontation with Israeli security forces. The erected barriers made of dumpsters and makeshift structures in a bid to stop the Israeli police and military who so far haven't been seen in the area. The leader of the outpost of Amona stressed that they will conduct a vigorous and decisive fight against the uprooting of the community, emphasizing that they will not apologize for returning to the homeland of the Jewish people. נגד הדבר הזה של עקירת משפחה מביתה ועקירת ישוב ממקומו, עקירת קהילה ממקומה ופגיעה בחיים יהודיים שהתפתחו ביהודה ושומרון, ערש הולדתו של העם היהודי, חזרנו הביתה ואנחנו לא מתכוונים להתנצל על זה. This won't be the first time the Amona outpost will be evicted. In 2006, Amona saw a violent eviction with nine shacks torn down by Israeli authorities. 
Police at the time were confronted by thousands of settlers that attacked the officers, resulting in more than 200 people injured. Meanwhile, Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman said last night that there would be no tolerance for violence against IDF soldiers or security forces. He called for Olamona residents to remove the prospect of violence from their agenda and not to endanger the settlement enterprise. Now to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accused the government of Syrian President Bashar Assad of carrying out nothing short of a massacre in the northern Syrian city of Aleppo and asserted that Moscow and Damascus must make a strategic decision for peace. And there is absolutely no justification whatsoever for the indiscriminate and savage brutality against civilians shown by the regime and by its Russian uh, and Iranian allies over the past few weeks, or indeed for the past five years. And the Assad regime is actually carrying out nothing short of a massacre. And we have witnessed indiscriminate slaughter, not accidents of war, not collateral damage, but frankly purposeful, a cynical policy of terrorizing civilians. After a Russian brokered ceasefire was reinstated in the city of Aleppo, an operation to evacuate thousands of civilians and militants began from the last urban stronghold of the Western-backed rebels, marking a major victory for Syrian President Bashar Assad. A convoy of ambulances followed a long line of green buses, drove out of the devastated rebel-held area of Aleppo, which was besieged and bombarded for months by the Syrian government forces. Meanwhile, the UN envoy for Syria, Staffan de Mistura, said that about 50,000 people remain in East Aleppo, with some 40,000 of them likely to be transferred to government-held West Aleppo, while the militants and their families will be evacuated to the rebel stronghold of Idlib, which the Mistura predicted will become the next Aleppo if no political solution can be found for the civil war. 50,000 in total. In total. Of these 50,000, we think that a good part of them, maybe 40,000, will partir and will go to the West Aleppo, Aleppo West, not Idlib. Then there are the combatants. Les combattants, les calculs actuels, c'est autour de 1500 jusqu'à 5000. On ne sait pas encore, on va voir les chiffres. Ils étaient cachés dans les maisons et avec leurs familles. Les calculs qui ont dit qu'il y a maximum 10 000 tous ensemble. Leurs familles vont partir avec eux. Ils veulent partir avec eux. Et où ils vont aller À Idlib. Qu'est-ce qui va passer à Idlib mais Je regrette de vous dire, nous ne savons pas, mais... Si on a vu ce qui s'est passé à Alep et s'il n'y a pas un accord sur le cessez-feu et s'il n'y a pas une discussion politique, voilà. Idlib devient la prochaine Alep. Russian President Vladimir Putin, who is on an official visit to Japan, said that the next stage for Syria is to reach an agreement on a full ceasefire for the entire country. I успешных боевых действий в Алеппо удастся закрепиться, а мирные граждане смогут перейти к нормальной жизни. Уже несколько тысяч человек вернулись в свои дома, даже полуразрушенные. Следующий этап – это достижение договоренности о полном прекращении огня на территории всей Сирии. Мы ведем очень активные переговоры с представителями вооруженной оппозиции. Since the beginning of the war in Syria, almost six years ago, some half a million people have been killed and more than 11 million displaced in the severest refugee crisis the world has seen since World War II. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan of Erev Tom and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.